I have been uh, associated with a bunch of uh, companies uh, of different shapes and sizes. When I say that in terms of scale, the number of customers that we have reached out to, and that also brings in a certain difference in the way product management is approached in each of these companies, while the fundamentals continue to be the same. And something that I'd like to focus on in this conversation with everybody are more inclined and closer to the fundamentals. And I'm sure, um, you know, we also have uh, an interesting case study, which uh, hopefully will give you some insights into how we go about doing things. So firstly, I'd like to cover my journey into product management. Like uh, Mija said, I've been able to join a couple of dots before finding my calling at product management. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Skills that I have been able to identify uh, either through personal experience or when I speak to product mentors, my colleagues, my reportees, and essentially figuring out what are the broad set of skill sets that are needed to be a rock star PM. And hopefully through maybe some nuanced conversations, we'll also be able to cover some specific areas. Like I said, we also have a case study and I'd like to reserve some time for questions and answers. So majority of the focus is going to be on case study and question and answers while I brush to some of the other aspects as we move along. This is a, uh, something that I enjoy talking about. Uh, it's ABC of my early career. Yes, there was acting. Yes, there's Bangalore and there was coding. Uh, I'll start from C. It's, I'll just go backwards here. And somewhere it's probably related to the B aspect of it, which is being a Bangalorean. And for those of you who are joining us from outside of India, Bangalore is one of the epicenters in India for technology, for startups, and for product management. And this has been identified uh, in some of the eminent product forums across the world. So while at least product management is a relatively new vocation in India, when I began my career, I started as a quintessential engineer. And then I figured, or I started venturing into figuring what I truly wanted to do in life. While I enjoyed coding, my early stages were with Hewlett Packard, where I worked as a system software engineer, more on the Unix, C, and assembly level coding. That's what I started with. I had the privilege of filing a couple of patents as well. I had an exciting journey while I had other callings as well. In parallel with my stint at HP, I co-founded a theater team along with a bunch of friends in Bangalore, and we toured across India and I did a bunch of exciting projects. I wanted to pursue arts as a full-time vocation. So I moved out of the coding space temporarily. I attempted at arts. We did a bunch of things, but I eventually figured that it's not sustainable. It's not viable. And maybe those are my early signs of being a product manager where you have to learn to ruthlessly prioritize. And that's something that I started doing at that stage where I prioritized for what is it that I wanted to do in the next stages of my career. So I I put a pin on doing full-time arts and I ventured back into the space of coding. I joined a brand marketing and design firm in Bangalore called Lazaro, where I started as a coder. I switched from system level coding to web technologies, app development, web app development. And I eventually moved into the space of product management, except it wasn't called product management. I largely interfaced with clients. I was able to understand the requirements and I hired a tech team internally that helped in developing those requirements into features. So I think that journey for me was very pivotal. It was, it was essential for me to understand that we do need people who are able to sort of walk between multiple worlds. And that's something that I got as a direct experience. Uh, I continued, although along with this journey, I continued being a theater practitioner, which means I was continuing with other theater teams. I also ventured into corporate training where structured communication, especially in the space of management is what I specialized in, using theater as a means of communication. I did this experiment with life for about three and a half to four years before I pursued a full-time flagship MBA from ISB Hyderabad. I did that and I graduated in 2018. And it is during my B school experience that I discovered that there is a respectable vocation for what I did accidentally, uh, and that's called as product management. And I was able to join a lot of dots internally and suddenly things started making sense in terms of being multi-skilled and being able to put all of that to the fore while showcasing high degree of ownership and presentation skills. And I'll, and I'll definitely be covering some of that as we move along. 
So that's broadly what I've what I would call as the ABC of my early career. My journey into what I would call as on paper designation product management, while I started doing product management much earlier than this, I think started with an on campus placement into Flipkart, where search as a problem statement. I thought it was a very fascinating area. I was leading this for about one and a half years. I also was part of the core team, which launched a few platforms, subsidiary platforms in Flipkart, like the Flipkart wholesale platform. We had another platform called as toogood.com, where I was part of the core discovery experience charter in each of these spaces. Another key area that I worked on at Flipkart was category experiences, which is books and precious jewelry from an end-to-end customer experience with a product point of view. So essentially creating an actionable roadmap for every single step of the customer journey for these two categories. I joined Amazon during the pandemic and incidentally moved out during the pandemic. I was there for close to one and a half years where I worked. I was leading the India product team for a program called as Found It on Amazon. Found It is essentially, think of it like Instagram meets Pinterest. Essentially, it's a content feed that helps create or instigate interest for products rather than creating or sort of creating a space of simply having a transactional experience for customers. So that's something that I worked on from three problem statements point of view. One is building a state of the art and a delightful customer experience on the feed, interfacing with content creators or influencers that enable them to upload and create great content and intelligently plugging this content that's available and meeting the customer in their shopping experience across the shopping funnel at Amazon. So that's something that I was doing at Amazon. And I very recently moved into Tootsie. I started my journey with Tootsie in February. Tootsie and Skinzy essentially is a D2C health tech company where we build products and services for customers. We have started with oral and skincare. And just to give a little bit more about this in 20 seconds, In oral care, we have started and are current market leaders for invisible teeth aligners. So if you've heard of Invisalign, which is a US company, in India, Tootsie is the current market leader in this space. We also have a couple of over-the-counter products like teeth whitening kits and a few other things related to this electric toothbrushes. In in terms of Skinzy, we are the first company in the world to launch laser hair removal from home. So essentially, it's again a service which we are customizing based on the customer's skin and requirements and condition. We also are shortly going to be launching a couple of over-the-counter products. We'll be moving internationally and launching soon. Uh, We are also, as we speak, developing a retail experience center in Bangalore. We are starting with Bangalore on this. So a lot of exciting problem statements in this particular space. And health tech is an area that I'm passionate about, which I think makes problem solving a lot more relatable to pretty much everybody I meet. Unlike esoteric problem statements that I was solving for at Flipkart and Amazon, this journey has been extremely exciting and um, I'm looking forward to what's in store for this. Cool. So I think one of the bits that I have been able to uncover, and like I said, I've been an accidental product manager. I started as an IT guy. I started as a coder. I then did a bunch of things in the art space. Fun fact, my alternate job offer to being a product manager was being a radio jockey in one of the leading radio stations in Bangalore. And I went ahead with product management only because it was technology is is at my heart and it's something I wanted to be closer to. So uh, I've been able to, you know, through experiments and after having worked in startups, like the one I mentioned, where we also incubated an e-commerce company in the space of super bikes, it's called bigbadbikes.com. It still exists. Please check it out. So having worked in startups, having worked in medium-sized companies, moving to large size like Flipkart and, you know, mammoth sized companies like Amazon, what I've been able to uncover through these different experiences, working with colleagues, veterans who have been around in this space for a longer time, I've sort of created a very simple list of skills that are sort of required to be a PM. Not all of them are needed for you to become a PM. So I think what I'd like to share is that depending on the company that you're joining, starting from there, the size of the company, the stage at which the company is in, is it a startup? Is it a large established company like one of the fan companies? So based on the company, 
within the company based on the specific problem statement areas, which is essentially the products that you'll be working on. And then specifically within that, the stage at which the particular product is in, your skill sets could change, or you might need to shine a lot more in certain more skill sets compared to the others. So this list, while it's not a comprehensive list, it's a fairly, it's a fairly sound list of a variety of skill sets. And based on the kind of problem statements that you're solving and the three parameters I spoke about, some skills are needed more than the other, right? So that's just something that you'll have to be mindful of. And I can perhaps take a few questions in the Q&A as we, as we get there. All right, so before we begin, for those of you who relate to cricket, if not, we can always provide an example. I'm a huge cricket fan. I'm a, I'm a buff. I watch a lot of it. And I know that the IPL match is going to start in the next 15 minutes. But yeah. Otherwise, this is you know, a picture for those of you who have evolved and grown watching cricket. Some of you might know some faces, some faces might not be familiar. But if you can drop in the chat box your answer to this question, who is the best of them all? Right? And I'll probably just call out the names in case you don't recognize faces directly. There's Jacques Callis, there's Sachin Tendulkar, there's Mutaya Murlidharan, there's Glenn Magrath, there's Virat Kohli, uh, there's Dhoni there, there's John T. Rhodes. And there's Ravindra Jadeja, all across different countries. So I'm not biased to just India. So can you just drop in who is the greatest cricketer? I see a lot of Dhoni fans. Yesterday's match might have been very depressing for you. Virat Kohli, yes. I'm a hardcore RCB fan being from Bangalore. So yes, Virat Kohli. I see ABD coming in. That's interesting. Gaurav says you don't know why there is Jadeja here. That's very interesting. All right, one and only Sachin. A lot of Sachin fans. There are UV. All right, sort of says, depends on what the situation demands. Very interesting. I'll probably give it 30 seconds more. JK, I'm assuming Anshu is talking about Jacques Okay. I'm not joking, but yeah. All of them are best in their respective areas. That's Kushal who's saying that. All right. Sachin is God. I agree. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, so I think some of you have have gotten this that you could be fans of a certain set of people who are good in their own disciplines, right? The follow up a good product manager or a product. The signs of you being a product manager is if you follow up a direct question like this with a follow up question, which says, "What's the situation?" Right. So, best is very contextual to where you are. If some of you recall the time when Pretty much the entire Indian batting order was dependent on Sachin. And the day Sachin gets out early, you see a collapse and India is almost invariably going to lose the match. So it, it really depends on what the outcome that you're searching for. If it's personal track records, then maybe they're the best in their own spaces. But what is the potential contribution that each of them make in order to help that their specific team, and this is, of course, specific countries, but you can take this to county cricket, to league matches like the IPL and so on and so forth. What is the contribution that they're making? Right? So the perspective of a product manager here, right? and if I had to take an overall and a generic context, Sachin, Dhoni, Virat are known more for their batting skills. They're perhaps batting specialists. Dhoni is also a good keeper, but he's not the best keeper. He's a good keeper. Right? John T. Rhodes is the world's best fielder that's there. That's great. Mutai Muradharan and Gel Magrath are great bowlers. One's a spinner, one's a pace bowler. And there's Jacques Callis and there's Jadeja. Both of them that stand out in their own spaces. Some of you have called this out, but essentially both of them are what we call as all-rounders. Right? Why are all-rounders important to cricket? Why did they even evolve? Right? Why are they needed? Why not have in 11, 5 based on the pitch, 5 specialist bowlers and 5 specialist batsmen? And one could be a wicketkeeper or a batsman, right? Why do we need these all-rounders in the team? And if you've noticed, in the past five years, especially with, with the evolution of shorter formats of the game, where bad days or test cricket, where you have time to redeem yourself, doesn't exist as much. Like Sahil saying this, right? Like good days and bad days, it sort of takes that out of the equation. What all-rounders bring to the table is it, they are essentially the glue between what specialists can't do or what specialists are sort of, if it's a bad day, what they sort of counteract for. You can rely on all-rounders to do at least one thing. Like Jadeja is also known for his phenomenal fielding capabilities. 
if not for batting or bowling you know he's going to contribute from his feeling to take wickets while historically jack talas is probably the greatest of all time in terms of being an all-rounder in today's playing days it's probably jadeja who's easily the best player of all time right and i say this with conviction because he's somebody who's able to contribute with the bat with the ball with fielding and now with captaincy if you're following the latest ipl season right so i think there's so much well roundedness ben stokes is a good example too you're right about right so moving away from cricket but essentially drawing focus to the point that all rounders are those set of folks who fill the gaps in whatever is needed in the current state of the team and quint essentially product managers and this is a term that i've been you know essentially saying for a very long time product managers are specialist generalists while it's a mouthful and probably takes a bit to register think about it you are creating generalists who are special at being generalists and that's what all rounders in cricket also do so while i've spoken about that and shifting focus away from cricket to perhaps something that uh, is more applicable in the current setup for product management while i understand there are a lot of companies even outside of it outside of companies that are building it based products which is either b2b saas companies um b2c companies ecom whatever have you while i do understand that even mechanical engineering and electrical and a lot of different companies are now exploring product management i think as a vocation maybe in the past decade decade and a half it's evolved more in the it space so in the context of this conversation i'm going to stick to that right but it is applicable outside of it so i'm going to stick to that for now the number one skill in my experience and from what i have seen and i want to put right up there is high stakeholder management it's probably one of the most underrated skill sets because while you continue to be the you know the owner for your area right you focus so much on working towards fighting for what the right solution is you're working with multiple teams and that's something that we'll focus on it's a product manager that understands to certain extent what an engineer does what a design folks do what business analysts do what business teams do what leadership requires and you're sort of joining all of those dots and while you might have a certain learned point of view like i said you're the glue between so many different disciplines your point of view essentially becomes something that's perhaps most refined most pristine and most learned right so having the ability to connect with each one of them and all of them might not agree with your point of view while you still work with them and make your point across essentially influencing without authority and is exactly what stakeholder management is so doing that and being able to do that effectively in my opinion is one of the most underrated skill sets that a pm should have ruthless prioritization that's something that i spoke about early days where i had to ruthlessly prioritize based on my roadmap for life and it's something that becomes almost muscle memory once this is done in practice it's harder said than done right because it also stems from what you do which is point number 1 each stakeholder could have a different priority but you need to ensure that they're all on the same page and there could be hundreds of different requirements but there are only those many resources that are available so really focusing on what is the immediate here and now action essentially being able to take 100 list of things to do break it down in terms of applying a certain logic to it which could be different based on the company stage and the product that you're working on and looking at creating a short term medium term and a long term point of view for all of the initiatives and really doing this on the fly and doing this every day is something that i would categorize as ruthless prioritization right it's not just prioritization it's ruthless prioritization customer advocate i think another word that i would like to add here is relentless customer advocate right we might come across hundreds of different things to do business might have a different point of view data might say something but what we do is talk to customers have a customer point of view product managers are relentless advocates for solving for customer problem statements even if it means optimizing for or dropping some of the initial uh, at initial stages optimizing for some of the back end bits you would be surprised to learn that even today so many of the back end systems in extremely evolved companies like flipkart and amazon are run on google sheets and excel sheets only because 
that's that's the only amount of bandwidth that we have and we'd like to focus that much more on ensuring that customers have a delightful experience fun fact and you can look this up early versions of spacex and i mean this rocket science was also on excel sheets right so those people who look at excel sheets in a bad connotation believe me it's a great place to be it's a good starting point so advocating for customers is number one being able to articulate the why of something as you evolve further and perhaps this the weightage for this increases as the evolution of the product happens or the evolution of the company or the product stage happens or your own personal evolution happens being able to truly articulate and there'll be plenty of signals for this there could be primary research there could be secondary research customer insights whatever it is and then you sort of start backing this with data and then being able to articulate why and using data and insights as a means of driving your point for better stakeholder management rather than leaving something to a gut feeling which is something that most founders and early stage pms and early stage products start with and then you sort of start learning from those mistakes or learning from those successes and then using data to back it such that you stop having conversations about your opinion versus mine but essentially looking at data as a means of articulating the why of you're doing something process optimization i'm not going to spend too much time on this but quite often you might find based on uh, product managers being able to think in a structured way we are immediately able to adapt and adopt into new environments and recognize that there are gaping holes even when it comes to processes so process optimization is also a good skill set to have for a pm presentation skills i've spoken about this uh, while it is related to stakeholder management for it's for you to being able to connect presentation skills doesn't mean just being able to put a good ppt together and you know connecting with a certain audience that you're talking with but it's also the ability to use articulation if it's just writing a good prod a uh, prd stands for a product requirements document being able to write a well thought through prd right using writing as a means of helping you structure your thoughts so essentially presentation skills covers those aspects as well but this also spans from even basic things like interviewing to representing yourself on job forums like linkedin the way you represent yourself personally as a brand and for you to be a spokesperson for your brand leadership is another aspect probably the second last on my list here uh, would be leadership which is the ability to influence while you have authority as product managers it's harder because you are working with or you'll be leading a bunch of product managers each of them who not necessarily have the necessary you know authority to influence teams especially stakeholder teams right so how is it that you work with them in order to a drive ownership being able to enable them in order to deliver what they are doing and inculcating skills which are you know product 101 so that's that's again something that comes up perhaps those who are looking at long term product managers or experienced product managers would relate a little more to this and the last one would be innovation innovation is the ability to think creatively within boundaries right creativity is often misrepresented you can always have creative ideas but what innovation is is to think about all of those creative ideas within a certain set of constraints and being able to solve for problems and using technology as a means of scaling those solutions in order to create delightful experiences for your customers and so that's something that i would define as innovation and these for me have been sort of tricks of the trade and some of the core skill sets that i have been able to observe and while you might find a lot of other skill sets that you know conventional blog posts and forums and a lot of talks tell you about very few will actually tell you about stakeholder management some might talk about prioritization and tell you about using a framework like rice and and what not uh, but the ability to constantly keep doing this and be ruthless at it is again something that not many are going to tell you and that's something that i've been able to learn from experience and you know i've had the privilege of sharing this with you moving on to the next set of things product management the non engineering story i think i saw a couple of questions and even prior to this common set of questions that i often get asked on forums like this or in linkedin or when i connect with pms or aspiring pms is is it okay for non engineers to pursue product management the example i often give and this is a movie that is one of my favorite movies in the animated space which is ratatouille 
where uh, there's there's this you know common phrase that they keep talking about that everybody can cook i think anybody can be a pm product management is more of a mindset it's more of a process rather than a hard skill and the more you inculcate and in, like for me product management has almost become a part of of who i am and most of the problems that i approach solving now i do it invariably even without thinking from a product management point of view an example that i can talk about you know right off the bat is very recently i renovated my house it's a joint family that i stay in four generations together share a roof it's an apartment so there are constraints that come in there unlike a private house and essentially use data my sense of observation of how everybody like my grandmother to my daughter and how they use each space electrical requirements internet requirements the aesthetics the choice of flooring the choice of fittings that we put in the kitchen and bathrooms all of them based on product management thought process and i don't think engineering was needed there right so a common question is which is the next slide is an it background do i come from an it background and is that essential for you to get into product management here's how i'm going to put it right so do i come from an it background yes i have higher chances of becoming a pm thanks to the industry biasness towards it background people this is what's commonly spoken about no i can still crack pm roles if i learn tech jargons as a pm my key role is to understand the language right so here's how i'm going to break it down right while there's a lot of text here and you can move to the next slide having an it background is an advantage in today's landscape it's rapidly changing and 3 years from now things could be a bit more different so i would say having an it background is an advantage not having an it background is not a disadvantage which means it's almost a normal it's like a level playing field for everybody who's not having an it background and as long as you can develop a core set of skills you don't have to do an engineering course for this and the it 101 list that's mentioned here and i'm aware and i've gone through the uh, the master camp curriculum that's been designed that's going to start shortly i think that's doing a great job of covering some of the fundamentals and now that i sort of have been away from a coding experience for a couple of years now almost a decade that i have not coded directly i think this the list that's mentioned here and what's being covered in master camp as long as you're familiar with them you should be good to go in most companies maybe a google requires you to be a, a level deeper i can't think of anything where a certain course at coursera or any of the popular forums you know teaching forums that are there that you can't take and sort of you know be familiar with terminologies and technologies that will enable you to have a meaningful conversation with engineers who are by the way going to be key, key stakeholders in your product management journey right so that's what i would want to submit on it background same thing for data analytics i'm not, i'm going to skip over this slide in the interest of time and you can go to the next one as well where again it's similar to this it's good to have a background because while you move ahead in your product management journey it's knowing and understanding the language of data is important what i would put it as an on the side of no and i have seen people even from a design background you know those who come from nift and some of the very popular institutes from design and our hardcore designers make their way into product management being able to ask the right set of questions to your respective data analysts or business analysts or mis engineers whatever they are as long as you're able to ask the right set of questions you should be good to go from a data point of view nevertheless i think again as a beginner in your product management journey it's good to have a certain set of skill sets and a familiarity and again these core concepts that are mentioned below in the yellow box those that are also going to be covered in the master camp course i think should be more than enough for you to be able to kick start your journey and like they say there's no better learning opportunity than experience and you'll sort of learn to start curating where you are as you start your journey on product management design background again very similar you don't need to be able to create high fidelity mocks with you know beautiful color and fonts as long as you're able to discern between user experience which is ux and ui it's absolutely okay it's okay to create you know bare bone white and gray boxes as long as you're able to articulate and like i said again having a very good understanding of why a certain element is important in that screen at that point in time rather than flooding that particular screen with hundreds of different options like right? think about a uh, simplified experiences that you have used right like you know simple things like uber uh, which the biggest call to button there is selecting your cab and booking a cab 
right? It's so easy. They don't complicate that experience with hundreds of different options and things that are running in the back end. So as long as you're able to discern between this, it should be fine. And again, these sort of basics that are mentioned below should be sufficient for you to start your journey. Similar to research, I would, I dare say that having a customer research, and since I spoke about being a relentless customer advocate is a quintessential skill set for a product manager. If you do have familiarity with customer research or you come from a research background, it's a skill set that any company, maybe earlier stage companies and startups will be able to value significantly because it gives you the ability to directly connect with customers, draw their feedback. Quite often you'll find, and I'll, I'll quote Ford, Henry Ford on this, where he talks about, if you ask customers what they want, they'll say they want faster horses, right? So quite often you'll find in a product management experience, customers are expressing a certain intent of what they want, but what they need could be something that's unexpressed, right? So being able to discern between the two is something a good customer research uh, person would do. And it's a good skill set to have as a product manager. So are we going to do a quick, fun case study that I wanted to talk about? Um, I've been thinking of, uh, about how do we go about it? And maybe I can just start off with one question and 30 seconds for these answers. Uh, can you name the top two or three apps that you use on a very regular basis on your mobile phones every day? And I stick to mobile phones. I know there are desktop apps and experiences, top two, three apps uh, that you use, uh, fun apps that you could use for recreation that you do for any of the requirements that you have. I see a lot of Sumato, Swiggy. Uh, yeah, we are close to dinner time, so I do understand. Some people have spoken about some payment related apps. I see a lot of Paytm, GPay, Instagram, Telegram, Snap, YouTube. TED Talks, very interesting. Uh, yeah, I actually do agree. TED has a very good app, uh, which I enjoy using. Splitwise, <laughs> understandable. LinkedIn, cool. I saw, I think the, the app that has stood out for me is WhatsApp, right? So you can stop with your answers. Uh, I think the most word cloud common one that I saw was WhatsApp and I'll probably stick to WhatsApp for this exercise. So let's do a real quick exercise here. You are the new appointed head of product for WhatsApp, okay? So you are the head of product for WhatsApp. If you were to build a feature, and maybe for the sake of clarity and context, I'll stick to WhatsApp India, just for the sake of this conversation. I'll stick to WhatsApp India, because I, as a product manager and as a user have also done a lot of India-based apps. So you are the head of product for WhatsApp India. What is the first, or what is the first initiative or feature that you would like to build for users or customers in the India ecosystem. So take whatever approach that you want to for this, maybe take about, about four to five minutes. Think about this from a product manager's point of view based on everything that we have discussed. I'll probably reserve about five minutes for this and then we'll move on to one quick step right after. Uh, please don't put your answers in the text box. Uh, Vivek, thanks for dropping that. It, it led me to it. Just do this activity on a piece of pencil and paper and just do this as an activity by yourself and I'll lead this on to something. So please don't drop your answers yet in the chat box. I, I will revert to that in some time. I'm setting a timer on, on, on my phone. Sure, Kavya. The task is to, you are the newly appointed head of product for WhatsApp India. You've been asked to come up with a feature, a new feature that you would like to launch based on your experience, whatever is it that you want to do. What is that feature? Think about that and approach it from all the skills that we have discussed. And, you know, just take about five minutes to put it on, you know, pencil and paper, and then we can get to, you know, actually interacting with one or two of you to get that forward. I hope that clarifies. Uh, here's an interesting situation that has evolved. I am now going to role play since I come from the background of theater, I can do that. But you should also keep role playing in your experience as a product manager, especially when you're sort of switching between things. I'm going to be playing the role of Mark Zuckerberg, right? And as Mark, I'm visiting India and there are a bunch of things that are happening. There's a conference and I've done this. 
and you enter an elevator. So essentially the concept of an elevator pitch. So you enter an elevator, you have about two minutes. It's the 40th floor to ground floor. So it's roughly going to take about two minutes. It's just Mark and you, and you need to pitch what you think is the product. There's a Google sheet that's going to be shared in the chat box. Ayush has just shared this Google sheet. What I'd like you to do is to just drop your name and write an elevator pitch, right? So please be mindful of it. Just write a very basic elevator pitch for what you think the feature should be. And the one that you know catches my interest and think what I find is most relevant, I'd like to have a conversation with you. And let's just do a fun give and take of this particular thought process. So I hope you're able to see this. I hope you're able to access the Google Sheet. If you don't, please let us know. And please drop in your name and an elevator pitch of what you think the product should be. All right, I see a couple of entries already. Mm -hmm. I see an interesting. Okay, I see a few people in the chat saying that uh, they're not able to access the form. In case you're facing difficulty of that, you can drop it in the chat here and I'll probably use that. I'll, I'll refer to both of them and I'll pick somebody, it's fine. So you can probably say elevator pitch colon and then write yours there. I see a couple of very interesting options here on the lines of some use cases. And in the interest of time, I'm just gonna probably pick from those who have already placed something. Elevator pitch, I see Siddharth here is, Ayush is saying hi, Mark already. It's very interesting. Thanks, Ayush. Mm -hmm. All right, in the interest of time, I'm gonna pick one of this that was very interesting. And since we are talking about time, I'll pick something that was more associated with time. Please keep this going. It's a great exercise to think about constantly. And it's just fun to do with your friends as well. I'm probably gonna pick, Shruti Shah. So Shruti Shah, if Ayush Webhav, if you can help, if you can pick Shruti and Shruti, if you're willing to come on camera or you know just on audio, I'd like to have a conversation with you. So if yeah. you can just drop that yes or no in the chat window here, and that way somebody can help and panel you. Tell me more about your idea. Yeah, so I was thinking it's um, Obviously, friend plans and you know any kind of plan that are made on WhatsApp. But now a lot of work meetings, work schedule also proposed on WhatsApp. So if you could add an in, uh, in you don't have to add a specific meeting. So I have a public calendar. You're making set of say 20 people. You know, you can have access to the calendars and then you can propose the time accordingly. So, first, I thought 10 people are going to be like, can't do less, then for other people, that's not. So, um, our process can be streamlined. Awesome. What was your insight? Uh, and for those who weren't able to catch all of it, I think I was just picking up from the bits that I could make out and from what she shared on the Google Sheet, which is around integration with the calendar, where it's especially when you're working with a larger you know, set of people. How do we have calendar being integrated? Because a lot of us make plans and if that can be integrated directly, that would be a good feature to have, right? So Shruti, so this is clearly coming in from uh, an, a personal experience. Is that right? In my last organization, a lot of people used to directly text you on WhatsApp when you want to sponsor one. There was specifically meant for work. And then, uh, especially at those times, because you know, if you want to you'll probably be out or you're on a holiday. It's very hard to get back your calendar and then back or remember that four or five days later that you know um easier uh, to give me on a Saturday or a Sunday and tell me that you know let's study first day I'll be at home and to go back to my calendar. I can do that from what awesome. So I'm gonna ask you one question. So what you've done is you're an advocate for the customer here. You know, you're presenting a point of view 
maybe a certain pain area that customers are facing and you've you have a bunch of use cases that you called out right like vacation work early stage startups who are primarily using whatsapp as a means right. of communicating and keeping track of things I, i think that's what i'm taking away from this great points that you make right and there were probably hundreds of different ideas that were there in this space what's the one thing that you're trying to improve essentially how would you measure say you're able to launch this what are you going to measure <laughs> i wonder is the number of business accounts that are there and how many of those accounts are now using calendar that's the, number of users uh, what's the outcome that's from an input perspective from an output perspective what is it that you'd like to measure no so uh, what's that perspective what i would yeah you're the pm for whatsapp so what would you measure in a minute Shruti, you might have to type that out. Sorry, I wasn't able to catch that on audio. Others, for those of you who are listening in, what's for you the measurability for this feature? For those of you who have been able to understand this, what do you think you'd be able to measure? Uh, Ashang, I think what would be helpful is if you can just summarize uh, what was said, what's in the Excel sheet once again, because I think a lot of us were unable to catch what what was said. The the pitch. Uh, I'll probably paste it here. Just give me a moment. So this was the pitch that was there. and she spoke about a few examples while she came on call about how there are a lot of customer based insights that she used so she spoke about startups uh, business users about those that are probably on vacation and want to find an easy way to keep track of things as soon as they're back so these are great use cases so what i see is that there is a lot of customer backing this there are possibly some data points that we are thinking about what i want to essentially get to and probably will stop with the case study when it comes to this i personally by the way the reason why i picked this particular thing and why i picked whatsapp is um this is one of the questions that was asked during my interview while i joined flipkart and i think the answer that i was able to present and sort of firstly the thought process and then the answer that i was able to present is what helped me crack a role at flipkart as a senior product manager so it's a question that's quite close to me and it's one of my favorite interview questions and uh, what i was talking to the team here is that in the master camp series this is i i would like to present my answer and what i presented and love to hear participants point of view when it comes to that particular approach so while we wait for shruti to sort of drop the measurability and for any of you who want to take a dig at what is the end result of integrating calendars into whatsapp what is that one metric or two metrics that you would like to look at i'd be uh, you know very keen on learning this so we can keep that conversation happening in parallel i'm aware so webber you can share the screen again and the presentation and we can move on to the next bit of things that we are doing so while we've you know quickly brushed on my brief journey and the fact that i had a rather unconventional journey into product management and i i pride myself in being an accidental product manager i spoke about experience based and industry backward insights as to the core fundamental aspects of the key skill sets for a product manager what i want to leave you with right and you'll start seeing that when i spoke about innovation leadership uh, stakeholder management it all alludes to one point which is iq is important because you need to start thinking intelligently about uh, problems to solve data to back you up asking the right kind of questions having the ability to read insights eq helps you climb the ladder faster because stakeholder management and some of the other key skill sets come into play so that's something that i want to focus on as a product manager focusing on why rather than how and when which are more sort of process related things and project management related aspects will help you move faster and having absolute clarity and conviction on the problem statements that you want to solve for this again goes back to you being a relentless customer advocate and also being able to relentlessly or ruthlessly prioritize and while you do all of these things being a good all rounder you solve for everybody you solve for your customers and users for your business for your team for your company and importantly yourself right so uh, i just wanted to leave all of you with these key takeaways and on that note i hope this real quick session into product management has been able to at least instill a certain curiosity there's no way you could have developed expertise or in depth knowledge of what a pm 101 is as long as it has instilled curiosity you know that i think is a job done and that's probably my measurability of what i wanted out of this session so that's something that's there i will read each of these inputs that you're adding and probably in the q and a i'll probably leave some of my comments to that and on that note i'll hand it over to webhof who has a few things to speak about webhof i show it to you 
thank you so much everyone uh, thank you ashank this was quite helpful uh, good insight into what's going to come in in the uh, product management boot camp uh, ashank will be there himself leading a couple of modules there so we don't want to share too much i'll just drop the link to the boot camp you can check out the website if you're interested these are the highlights to the boot camp and if you're looking to transition into product or uh, if you want to build a career in product management there's a boot camp that we are going to start at the end of april so i'll just drop the link in the chat and we can take it from there meanwhile any questions that are there we can look to answer yeah uh, we have a couple of minutes for q and a and we can yes. yeah absolutely uh, so sahil is asking do you think entrepreneurs make good product managers well yes uh, at uh, entrepreneurs have a key sense like a good entrep- like you can be an entrepreneur but i think a good entrepreneur is somebody who's been able to identify a core need of a customer either articulated or unarticulated being able to translate that finding a solution for that using technology to scale that particular problem or uh, scale the solution to that problem and being able to your immediate stakeholders will be your team but importantly your investors assuming you're going in for funding so being able to present that effectively and while managing your bunch of stakeholders so i think having entrepreneurial experience or working in early stage startups is a great place for you to sharpen and hone your product skills thanks for sharing dr shank there's one more question i am a non technical guy from chemical production experience so if we generalize this question people from across backgrounds i think we've covered a lot of this in yeah. our uh, slides today yeah. but just want to reiterate uh, once again so people with no prior technical or product experience how is their uh, transition into product management uh, from your lens so i think something that i've seen often work well like i said as long as you have skill sets unlike other disciplines where you need maybe as a coder you need to know a couple of languages if you want to work for a you know a company product management is more of a of a methodology it's more of a certain mindset that's needed while you approach solving for problems while working with a bunch of people and pretty much influencing without authority while you're at it it's applicable across the industry so as long as you have the relevant skill sets you're already you know relevant uh, you're already through from a fitment point of view now how do you sort of make your first break into it maybe one of the good methods to do it i remember seeing one of the questions very early on is is an mba important i'd say even people without an mba are able to crack product management roles except today because the vocation hasn't matured completely it's not as mainstream as some of the other established vocations that have been around an mba degree does provide you an easier access into product management again it's an advantage but not having an mba is not a disadvantage right so it does make life a bit easier but it's not it's not a prerequisite what an mba also does is it it's it's a good holistic view of looking at businesses and problem statements so i think that skill set point of view also a product manager would resonate with an mba but your first entry could be if you have any other relevant skill set so a good transition could be if you are a data analyst if you are somebody who's a designer if you're somebody who's a program manager which is you're already a generalist in some way and you are working closely with product teams right when you work closely with product teams what you do get is the ability to connect with product managers to understand the thought process behind that and then being able to start working towards honing those skill sets yourself and if the company supports you to transition internally great you can apply for it find the relevant skill sets get feedback find product mentors and then make that transition into product management the other way to look at it is start with early stage companies where you know they would be willing to invest in you as long as you have relevant skill sets and you know sort of offering a product role to you and then once you have sort of tried your hand at it you can then find uh, you know relevant options in bigger companies thank you thank you ashank one more question that keeps coming up is what is the difference between a b2b and a b2c product manager and what are the difference in the skills that are required that's a good question i don't think there's a short answer to it but what i would say like simple breadcrumbs that i'd like to drop is that b2b have much longer build cycles because your customers are not everyday customers they might use your products right that particular business might be shipping certain products which their own customers are using but your direct business customers your cycles are much longer you don't have as many for example an amazon and flipkart have millions of daily customers 
who are interacting with it, which means there's that much more richness of data and different spectrum of users. So your cycles are different. And as a product manager, ability to be more agile in a B2C environment is valued more compared to B2B environments, right? So B2B would be your ability to think more long-term from day one, whereas in B2C, you have the ability to be a little bit more agile. I think primary fascia, that's the difference, but fundamentals and core PM 101 remain the same. All the skill sets I spoke about, they remain exactly the same. Perhaps this is the only difference. It's like, again, going back to cricket, it's like just difference in pitch. Your skill set of being a batsman or being a bowler is the same. It's just the pitch conditions change. So you just have to alter your technique a little bit. That's the only difference. That's a great analogy. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Ashank. One last question before we let you go is uh, any resources that you would suggest people to uh, start brushing up their product skills? They're like starting out their product journey. So what kind of resources, what books should they read? What blogs should they read? I think today there is an ocean of different ones. So I don't know if there are better resources available and I probably haven't been keeping track as much. But I think what where I started is how to crack a PM interview. I'm sure all of you have heard of this. I think two, three key chapters in this to me were extremely insightful into understanding a product manager's journey from a structured point of view. Like I said, I was doing product management even before I knew I was doing it. What that book helped me do is create a structure around it. Do the same thing, right? So I think that's a great book. Very recently, um, I'm forgetting his name, Vivek Singh, somebody who, who basically put up uh, technical skills that a PM would need. That's a sim- tech simplified for a PM. It's one of those books that's trending on LinkedIn and it's doing the rounds. Uh, he's a colleague of mine from Flipkart. And um, I think that's a good book uh, that can also provide you insights into technical, given that a lot of questions were around non-technical aspirants. So that would be a good starting point. Great. great, great. I think uh, that's largely it. There are a couple of questions related to, to the program. We'll, we'll take that up. Sure. Thank Thanks, folks. Yeah. Thank you so much for your uh, time today, Ashang. This was packed full of insights. The session was amazing. Thank you so much, Vaibhav. Thanks, Ayush, for this. Uh, thank you for everybody who tuned in uh, and for participating and, you know, very interesting insights that and very interesting problem statements. I wish I was a WhatsApp PM to actually action on some of the insights that you gave. I know I've not been able to answer the exact metric. I'll probably leave that as a mystery. And for those of you who joined the master camp, let's take that up as an exercise and I'll answer. I'll start that session by answering what's a good measurability of this particular feature that we spoke about. Absolutely. Right? Um, I'd like to stay connected. So I'm fairly regular on LinkedIn. So if there's anything that I can help you with, please uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. And uh, looking forward to seeing most of you, if not all of you in the master camp session at Masters Union. So thanks everybody. And thanks folks for setting this up. Thanks, Ashank. So there were a couple of questions related to the program. I will take it directly from the chat and try and answer them. Uh, is this program suitable for fresh undergraduates or people with less than two years of experience? Absolutely. So uh, people who've just graduated who are looking to move into APM roles also, I think the program is suitable. There are specific salary brackets for APM that we've mentioned on the website itself. So could be a good anchor point for all of you. Debra Jyoti uh, is asking, can you please share the details about the PM Bootcamp? So this is a four month program placement focused. There are five different, uh, four different modules throughout uh, a month long module. And there are a few micro courses uh, as well. You, I'll just paste the uh, link to the landing page here. You can check out all the details there. And what is the headcount on intake? Uh, we are going to uh, take 60 uh, participants for this cohort. Sort of the fee, you can check out the fees and everything else related to the program on the website here. Uh, is coming to the campus mandatory? Absolutely not. Uh, this is a 100% online program. But if you're in and around Delhi NCR, you can welcome to come down to the campus. When does the course start? I think the uh, tentative start date is 23rd of April, but we'll confirm the exact start date in a few days. Is four months sufficient to get uh, an APM role? Anilesh, sometimes four months is sufficient. Sometimes even four years won't be sufficient. It's completely up to you and the amount of time and effort that you put in during the program. The more you put in, the higher the chances of you uh, landing a role. 
is this an executive program which one can do while working uh, executive programs are a little different this is an online cohort based program uh, you can do this while working while studying that's not an issue at all prajwal is asking where is the campus in delhi is it's based in dlf cyber park in gurgaon right opposite cyber city uh lakshmi is asking when uh, would this be the only cohort for this year uh, lakshmi we haven't made a decision on this uh, as yet we'll get back to you on that in a few months maybe uh, we are not too sure kisle kant is asking are there any scholarships okay there's a very interesting uh, scholarship challenge that's running on i'll just share the link in the chat and maybe you'd like to participate in the challenge today is the last day of the challenge uh, incidentally so i would suggest taking this challenge if you are looking for a scholarship in the program uh, do you help with placements and job interview preparation say so, yeah, that's the goal of the program throughout the four months besides the live sessions over the weekends where, where uh, masters like ashank rajshekar oja uh, all of these people would be taking the live sessions uh, we'll also be conducting a lot of career related sessions where we'll not only help you with the uh, interview prep we'll also help you figure out the kind of industry and job roles that are actually suitable for your particular profile so there is there's a story that needs to be built out from your past experience and the future uh, that you've planned for yourself so all of that will be covered after four months how you assess assist for placement so as i said during the four months itself within after the first uh, month we'll start with the career development journey there'll be mentors and career coaches that would be assigned to you and they'll be helping you with uh, placement okay uh, there is there, we'll share the recording we'll we'll upload this on youtube in a couple of days we'll do that you'll be based out in a different country soon can i still take this up remotely or uh, so that will completely depend on the time zone akash i think uh, if you, if you go to us then it might be a little difficult but you're if you're in and around asia then i think it will be uh, okay for you to attend um, we will share the schedule also so i think you should make a decision only after the timings are released and we'll do that in a you know a couple of days we will we'll share the recording absolutely uh, there's no uh, branch in bangalore brunal but uh, we're going to have a number of meetups local city meetups so if there are enough people in bangalore we'll make sure you will uh, arrange for these local city meetups please provide some the portfolio ideas okay so uh, an important part uh, of of the program is building out your portfolio so uh, for that you'll have to join in in the program or like you can reach out to us with whatever your portfolio is currently so do uh, send us your portfolio and we'll be happy to help you out with it grunal is saying there are a lot of people who are enthusiastic in bangalore uh, including a lot of masters union alumni uh, we hear you grunal for sure we will uh, do a number of city meetups in bangalore in that case Mm, do we need to finish the scholarship today itself or only registration so sayer there's a 15 minute quiz so take that quiz today today is the last day for the quiz there is a one hour simulation if you qualify for the quiz then you qualify for a simulation there's a one hour product simulation very interesting that you can take up till the 6th of april so just take 15 minutes today and uh, take the quiz it's it's very interesting total fee amount needs to be submitted in one go absolutely not so uh, you can take up 3 months 6 months 9 month 12 month emi options no cost emi options that, that can sort you out uh, sort of this is uh, answer to your question kerash has taken the simulation challenge today uh, 6th 6th of april uh, or 7th morning is when we'll sh uh, share the shortlist uh for the people and we'll also be sharing a coupon code so that you don't need to pay the the application fee for the program same kind of uh, program inside with very low cost so what is the different punit i recommend you join the inside program in that case i think if that helps you out absolutely no worries there we've received a overwhelming response for this uh program so definitely recommend uh, go there instead uh vipul how to approach employer on linkedin with resume or portfolio uh, vipul so uh, just letting uh, you in on a secret what we do is uh, we send out the application in the form of a resume a cover letter and the portfolio and a sample problem statement that 
so for example if you are looking to apply to cred for example so solve a sample problem statement for them showing your thought process along with your linkedin profile your resume and your portfolio that really helps get a interview call at least after that it's completely up to you how you communicate how you uh, show or uh, demonstrate your thought process uh, the depth of knowledge that you have so all of that comes in for that uh, i'm selected for the simulation round right thanks but i was expecting to convince me to no pun absolutely not we've done no marketing for the program we don't need to convince anybody if if you think this will add value to you uh definitely join in the program because the roi is such that you will be joining very good startups and corporates so the program pays for itself very quickly so that's why the uh, fee structure is such uh i'm a chemical engineer passing out in january any benefits from me so benefits as such there are every company needs product managers today shreyansh so if you think you can identify a few companies in a particular so fmcg companies d2c companies direct to consumer companies a lot of these companies do require product managers so that might be helpful for those companies but you'll have to kind of understand what your background is the kind of thought process that even ashank shared in the slides today so just make a decision based on that if this is the right program for you we will just check out the website please that will help surya uh, for for this i think stay tuned we we are doing a session tomorrow at 5 pm just for uh, that specifically designed how to crack a pm interview so definitely join in tomorrow and we'll answer your question in detail with a few case studies how an actual pm what what was her thought process and it's going to be a really uh, amazing session tomorrow so uh, please join in tomorrow for the answer to your question kelash when will the career session start after four months so during the four months by the time you finish the course you'll already have a job in hand if you put in the right amount of effort you come to the classes all of those things are a pre requisite for that i think we've answered all the questions we are going to close the session now thank you for joining in thanks for your time thank you everyone Bye.